Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to Tract and Truth Tuesday. Tract and Truth Tuesday. That's the title we give to each of our Tuesday broadcasts here at Bible Tract Echoes. Every day on this broadcast, we talk about gospel tracts and we teach the Bible, but we just deliberately set aside our Tuesday broadcast to do two things. Number one, yes, we still emphasize gospel tracts, and in so doing, we want to put some gospel tracts into your hand. The other thing we do on Tuesday is we try to sharpen our skills in telling the gospel and urge each other on in the whole business of giving the gospel of Jesus Christ to those who do not know Christ as Savior. Now, to that end, my Bible right now is sitting open to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 4, to a very, very familiar verse. So if you can, reach over, get your Bible, or turn on that electronic gadget of yours. Go to Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 will be our focus. I'll be talking about a Gospel tract here that's in my hand. We are only two weeks away from Easter, and this tract is one that you need to get right away. But let me, let me lead in with my story this way. Rarely do I get to go to the post office. One of the workers here at our staff usually does that. But this last week, I needed to be at the post office. And like many businesses, the post office has automatic doors. They open on their own. Well, I took care of the business I needed to transact there at the post office. And on my way out, I was about five feet or so in front of this lady, a lady I'm presuming is in her late 70s, a very petite, very sharp lady. Well, we, as we both approached the door, I jokingly said, here, <laughs> let me open the door for you. And of course, the doors automatically open and we both laughed. Then I just simply looked at her and said, oh, I just wanted to prove that chivalry is not totally dead in the United States. And once more, we laughed together. But then she said, well, since you've been so kind to me, let me be kind to you. Let me give you something. She had a sheet of paper, and on the sheet of paper were some key warning signs about a heart attack, uh, things that to help identify a potential heart attack well in advance. She told me she wanted me to take care of my heart. Well, I took the paper, and I thanked her for it, but then it was my turn. Stay tuned. I'm going to tell you what happened next in the story that began at the post office. Well, if your Bible is open there in front of you, uh, my Bible here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19 is the one that's before us today. It's a great verse if you and I are any way at all serious about following Christ because the word follow is here. Matthew 4, verse 19 says this, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you fishers of men. Now, those were real words said to real people by our real Savior during his real earthly ministry. Years ago in uh, Bible school and studying Greek and so on, we had to translate this passage, and we did a consensus translation. I've always kept it. I write it in the margin of my Bible. Here's what it says, Matthew 4:19. Come, follow me, get behind me and watch. That's really what the word follow me means, get behind me and watch. Come, follow me, get behind me and watch, and I will make you fishermen for catching men. 
Dear friend, if you and I are following Jesus Christ, we're going to be interested and involved in trying to see people get caught by the gospel and get caught by a loving, eternal God who sent his son to die on the cross to save them from their sin. If you and I are serious about living for Christ, we're going to be serious about telling the gospel. If telling the gospel is not, well, it's not very much on the radar of your life, may I very pointedly say that you're probably not following Jesus very well. I'm going to come back to that here in just a moment. I mentioned gospel tracks here a moment ago, and we are just two weeks away from Easter. What a great time frame for us to be telling the gospel. Now, I've got a gospel tract in my hand simply entitled, He is Not Here. Oh, by the way, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This tract was designed to really catch people's attention about the fact that Jesus is not on the cross, and he's not in the grave. Again, this tract is entitled, He Is Not Here. Listen to the way it starts. It says, no, of course the Lord Jesus Christ is not on the cross, and he's also not in the grave. This man, Christ Jesus, is alive today in the body of flesh and bones in which he was crucified and buried. He is in heaven, and there in heaven he offers eternal life to all who receive him as Savior. Now, those statements in there, those Bible statements are based upon statements found in the Word of God, and the references for them are there. Oh, friend, if you and I are interested in following Christ, then we're going to be interested in telling people the gospel Here is a great track, but you need this one right now. Now, the word Easter does not appear anywhere in this track, but because this track talks about the fact that Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead, it makes just a tremendous tool right now. And the front cover of this track has beautiful Easter lilies on it. It really is going to catch people's attention. This track is entitled, He Is Not Here. Now, listen. At the end of my broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on and give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Be prepared to do that. Have pen and paper ready. Give us your name. Give us your mailing address. We'll send you free of charge a sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks, including this one, He Is Not Here. This is the 80th year, you heard me correctly, the 80th year that we have been sending out gospel tracts free of charge all over the world. We not only give the tracts for free, we pay the shipping. We're able to do that because God's people help us. We have a motto here, and we've added a little tagline to it because it's our 80th year. Here is our motto. Here is our mission statement. We say we're taking the Word of God to all the world 80 years and counting. You and I need to work together to take the gospel to the area in which you live and work and have your being because that's where God planted you and that's where God wants you to be serving Him. Let me be a partner with you, a helper with you. Let me send you that sample pack out of tracks. You be ready, please. Because Jesus said, remember, follow me, he said, and I will make you fishers of men. Well, let me get back to my story, the story from the post office. After this lady gave me her paper about heart attacks, I told her this. I'm quoting now what I said. I'm very grateful that you care about my physical heart, and I will read your paper. But then I said... I have a paper for you. What does it talk about, she said. Well, as you are concerned about my physical heart, I'm concerned about your spiritual heart. My paper will tell you about the sickness in your spiritual heart and how it can be healed. It will tell you how your spiritual heart can be given eternal life. With that statement, she looked at me for about five seconds, just stared me in the eyes. And of course, at that moment, five seconds can seem like forever. Then she said this, actually, my mother tried to tell me about my spiritual heart when I was a young girl, but I never was interested. At that, I made this next comment. I said, my dear lady, It's a long past the time for you to be serious about your spiritual heart. Evidently, not only did your mother love you very much, but 
So does God. Your mother has been gone for many years, hasn't she? And the lady said, yes, she has. I said, her physical heart no longer matters, does it? And the lady said, no, it doesn't. But I said, your mother's spiritual heart goes on. It has eternal existence, and so will your spiritual heart. Your physical heart and mine are important. And I'm going to read your paper, I said, because I want my physical heart to be strong. But I want your spiritual heart to be both alive and strong. I said, will you read my paper? It turns out that this lady's mother was a strong follower of Jesus Christ. She read her Bible and frankly lived out her faith. This lady had never forgotten her mother, never forgot the way she lived. Then I turned to the lady and I said, maybe, ma'am, maybe I'm the final answer to one of your mother's most dearest prayers. I'm sure, I said, I'm sure she prayed that you would give serious thought to eternal matters and pray towards that end. Maybe I'm the answer to her prayers, and maybe I'm the last answer that God's going to give to you to put in your pathway to make you think seriously about your spiritual heart. This lady, I gave her a gospel track. She promised she would read the track. I put my phone number on it. I said, would you, would you call me when you get done reading this track? She had to leave. I had to leave. The conversation, frankly, had gone on longer than either one of us had planned or could afford to because of schedule. That's the way life is sometimes, isn't it? The question may be, Mark, did she call you back? The answer is the next day she did. She called me on the phone. She said, is this Mark? I said, yes, it is. And she said, I'm the lady you talked to at the post office. I recognized her voice. And I said, I'm so glad you called me back. I said, did you read my paper about your spiritual heart? She goes, yes, I did. I said, do you have any questions about it? She goes, no, it made perfect sense to me. I said, your spiritual heart is sick, isn't it? She goes, not anymore. I said, what do you mean? She goes, I read your paper. It told me about my sin. And you're right. My spiritual heart was really sick because of my sin. You have no idea of the things I've done in my lifetime. But I, she said, went on to say, but your, your paper told me about Jesus and how he would take my sin away. He would give me eternal life and make me alive spiritually, give life to my spiritual heart. She then went on and said, on the back of your paper, there was a box with a simple prayer. I prayed that prayer. I prayed and asked Jesus to take my sin away and give me eternal life. I said, did you pray anything else? She goes, yes. I said, what did you pray? She said, I thanked God for my mother. Well, friend, that day, this lady in her late 70s was born again. She became a child of God. She became a babe in Christ. A bunch of things she said that her mother used to try to tell her had come flooding back to her mind it's amazing those things that she had buried, this lady had buried deep in her soul and tried to forget all those years came back because of the faithfulness of a mother and the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit now in this lady's life. Friend, giving the gospel track out was simple. All I did was start a conversation and it turned into a spiritual birth event. Have you given out a gospel track yet today? Let's go do that. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.